Hi, good morning. Welcome to Nate's Neighborhood. I'm John Kohler, and this, this is Nate Bully. Hey, guys. Well, that's, that's a big entry, by the way. Was I didn't, know, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even say all the good stuff about how you're, <laughs> no. like, you know, highly ranked and whatever. He's yeah, I think one I'm, of Nye County's top realtors. And I'm there. I think I was 13 this, this week. Is that right? enough, yeah, which makes sense. Oh, well. 13th three. episode. 13 tries harder. Yeah, So always. If you have any real estate questions. Uh, first part of the show, we talk real smart. Second part of the show, we go take a tour, and I'm excited. And also, uh, kind of, I'm kind of up against. It. I'm gonna need to get a haircut at the break if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm. we strangely enough, I'm gonna shave John's head during the break. So that'll be a lot of fun. So we can yeah, look forward gonna, to that. Yeah. I mean, you won't see it, but you'll see it. You'll see it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that'll be nice. Yeah. So this is the Craftsman Homes episode. You All know? right. Yeah. Now we had yeah. a really good time down on Highway 160. I don't know how many times I've actually driven by this place and never really given it a second thought, but. Uh, actually, when we were originally uh, moving to Pahrump, that was an option that we had kind of discussed yeah. with you. Yeah, I think you guys actually had a phone call with Scott. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we did. At one point, yeah. Yep. And, um, and, and you just couldn't, you know, you couldn't make did. it work the way that you wanted to. Right. Because um, so at the time, we had, goodness, I want to say at the time, there were, well, fires, of course. And right. right now, you've got fires. Uh, and that drives up lumber prices. Right. So that's going to drive up the, the cost of any home, mm -hmm. including a manufactured home, because they're all built out of wood. Right. I mean, they're actually, you know, houses for all intents yeah. and purposes other than what... They're, they're elevated off the ground. Right. I mean, they're, and in a lot of cases, so especially, here's the interesting thing, is that a lot of folks will tell you, especially a, a home a, or a, a builder that builds stick-built homes, mm -hmm. will tell you that a stick-built home is much more structurally sound than your manufactured home. But that same builder might build that stick-built, site-built home uh, with two-by-four, which is the general standard for framing as far as when you frame the home you drive by and you see a bunch of wood and you yeah. see through it it's framed and it's usually framed with two by four or at least two by four right um these houses were all two by six if I remember all two by six yeah. yeah and that's that's a big deal i mean you've Good got upgrade. you've got a yeah. much stronger structure right uh and in a lot of cases you've got a stronger structure than you would in some stick built homes well then the yeah. other thing too is like some of the land out here in uh, nye county is um Shifty, let's say that. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, you've got, so just like Las Vegas and, and anybody anywhere, if you live at the bottom of a dry lake bed, like mm. Las Vegas and Pahrump and Amargosa Valley and Sandy Valley and pretty much everybody around right. here, um, you're going to come across several different types of, of what, sediments, I guess you would call them. Mm -hmm. So in some areas, you're going to find clay where, the, where when it rains and gets heavy, heavy rains, mm -hmm. the clay will start to rise and starts to swell. Uh, in a sandy area, you know, it's the right. opposite. Then you get the sinking of You that. get some sink. And I've seen yeah. some houses that were, um, you know, put on a, a yeah. permanent foundation and they, they sink into the desert. It's like, oh, yeah. gosh. And it's really, you put it, you know, and that's kind of it. If, you, if your realtor puts you in that area and puts you in that position, it, that's the very last thing that you want. You know what I mean? If you find this piece of land and it's super cheap and it's buildable, there's a reason. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's a reason, and in that it's, case, that's what, too it. good to be true. Yeah, and, and then it know? was. What? Yeah, if an if a buildable acre lot should right now, these days in 2021, should probably cost you between 65 and 75 grand. Right? Okay, um, and that's with power, well, septic, pretty much everything there, just ready to put something on. Okay, uh, if you find one of those for 30 grand or 35 grand. There's a reason behind it, and it may not be that. You know, it could be next to just a rundown place that has a bunch of manufactured or, or beat up old cars could, or something like that. You could live next to me, trailers. whatever, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So in this case, if, if if you're if you're going into one of those questionable areas, and we do have two specific neighborhoods in our valley that are questionable, you know, just a little uh, shifty land, one shift. in the middle, yeah, yeah, and they're just, yeah, it's a mix of sand and clay in those areas. Right. So and beyond that, there were some homes built in the early to mid 90s that weren't necessarily built correctly, especially as far as the foundations were concerned. Right. Um, and that's a whole, that's probably a whole nother episode. I would absolutely love to get into it. Sure. Um, but, but we but got a bunch to get to on this one. But yeah, but sure. as far as manufactured homes are concerned, that's yeah, an advantage. It, gives, it gives you a huge advantage because whether you think you're on a, you know, an area that's weird or you don't, you put down a manufactured home and you've got those engineer's jacks, those heavy duty mm -hmm. engineer's jacks underneath between you and the ground. So when you can adjust your, your foundation essentially, right. essentially, that goes a long way. Yeah. 
Yeah, it so. really does. And so maybe you can save some money on the land, figure, you know, save some money on the house, get the cool jacks, and there you and go. That's I mean, kind of set up yeah. for, for the long haul. You might yeah, have to and they're, and they're not just for, you know, of course they're not just for areas where you feel like you might have to, you know, adjust things. Um, right. You'll find them all over. And of course, you know, of course that's you true. always hear manufactured home, mobile home, modular home, that they were all essentially the same thing. Um, of course not. It's just essentially you're looking at time frames there. I think it was before 76, it was mm -hmm. a mobile home. After 76, it right. was a modular home. Right. And manufactured homes are a completely different beast. Uh, but what you do get is you get a home that is also inspected more times than a stick-built home would be while it's being built. I guess it would be. Yeah. So yeah. you've got if you, you've got originally on a stick-built home, they'll go in and do the framing. They'll do the electrical. They'll do the bare minimum but just enough for the city's inspector to be able to come through and go, okay, that's code, that has to be fixed, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Right, this one's got all the trim, and then it's all inspected. And yeah. yeah, and then after that, it's, it might get one more inspection before you get what's called an occupancy permit, and that means this is a home, it's buildable, it meets, or it's, it's built, it meets code, someone can live in it now. Uh, a manufactured home gets seven or eight different inspections on its way. Yeah, so I mean, if you think about it, if, if you've got, say, a double wide, okay? Um, those two pieces are each gonna be inspected at least three times before they leave the factory. They're then going to be inspected when they're put onto the ground. They're then going to be inspected again when the jacks and everything are, are put in the right spot. Right, you get And then it. finally you get sure your enough. home inspector, you know, your, your local um, government guy who's gonna come out and do that final inspection to give you certificate of occupancy. Um, that's a lot of fail-safes along yeah, the way. Yeah, it's a ton of fail-safes, yeah. yeah. So, and that's one of the things I try to bring up to people is, you know, you're not buying a worse product. You're buying a different product. It's Coke and Pepsi. Some folks love Pepsi. I'm a Coke fan. You know what I mean? Coke, uh, Pepsi gets uh, well, stale too quick. words, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fist fighting over it. But that's, that's really the best way to look at it, you know? It's, uh, the, only, the only big difference that I see yeah. is that every few years, maybe five, six, seven years, you've got to have an engineer come by and... Tighten those jacks up. Make sure they're still in the right spaces. Right, and that's really it. Otherwise, you'll you know you go through and you start hearing the creaks and all that little stuff that you're, you know, that you would hear in a plantation home because those are essentially built literally the same way. Right, but no jacks. Obviously, they didn't have those back then. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, they probably did. Big uh, poles. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know, I don't know what they Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I haven't spent any time in one. <laughs> we don't have any around here. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so on uh, part two of the show, uh, get the haircut. Go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Get the haircut. And then we're He's going to get the three... haircut during the break. Let's not, you know, we're not trying know, to we'll do that. outshine anybody around here by giving haircuts. You know what I mean? But it's just, it's a thing that needs to be done. Yeah. <clears throat> just, I just, I'm just thinking mow it down. Like yeah. really with. Crew cut? Just, yeah, crew cut. Yep. It's just fine. Yeah. I like it. This stuff gets kind of crazy anyway. Um, but so we're, we, we looked at uh, three different configurations. Of, we did. Uh, and, uh, and uh, was, I think there was a, what, a 1,500 square, well, there was a couple <clears throat> of 15 to 1,600 square footers that right. we'll get into in the, in the tours. Uh, and then one was smaller, right, like 1,400 and change? Right. But they all had, they all had space. You could, you know, you could walk in and breathe. Right. That was the part that, you know, I, I was, you know, they're deceptively big. Yeah, especially the newer ones like Scott, Scott Shepston and Andrew Scharf are your two guys that you're going to find at Craftsman Homes there. So all you got to do is look up Craftsman Homes Perump and you're gonna get their phone number. Um, amazing guys, they know anything and everything about manufactured homes and stick-built homes because they are both operating realtors as well. Right. So they're gonna be able to help you on all sides. Right, the um, nice thing about, you know, so they've got three that are there, but there's so many different configurations to all this stuff. 30 or 40, yeah, and, and what you'll realize is, you know, when you, when you go to see a stick-built home builder, they might have five or six different plans that they offer. Right. Um, and if you want a different type of plan, you're probably going to pay between seven and twenty thousand dollars for them, and their drafter and their Engineer, blah blah blah. Their band, 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 band. Right, yeah. totally worth it because then those plans are yours and they can't ever sell them again. Right. But again, that's a huge price point to eat up mm -hmm. just for having the plans. See what I mean? Right. Uh, in this case, yeah, you've got they're working with what five or six different manufacturers essentially right. and then they've got and all they've, their and lines each got their own yeah so you're looking at essentially 30 to 40 different variations that are just there waiting for you right yeah which is great and those aren't something you're going to pay extra for because right. they're already done 
Right, and because these guys are brokers and not like a direct manufacturer, whatever, they have those options to give you. So it's kind they of do. Nice. Yeah, they're not stuck just with craft craftsman homes. Right. Um, but granted, the most the majority of their brands that they do carry and work with are yeah. craftsman homes homes. Like I believe right. Redmond is one of them. Right. Uh, you know, one out of one out of Nevada, one out of I think maybe Utah, and one out of Arizona. Right. Um, so and it, it's a it's a broad spectrum as well. You know, mm -hmm. you're really getting a lot of well, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Yep. And then you're getting, you know, less out-of-pocket costs along the way. Right. Yeah. And um, I exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're, <laughs> they're they're a great alternative. You right. Know? And if you've never lived in one, or if you don't really know what one is, that, uh, you know, buying a new Scott one. and Scott and, and Andrew, yeah, go in and, and walk the models they have. Right. You know, get a feel for it. And they've got them in various stages, which you guys will see in the tour. There's one that was almost totally done. Right. Yeah. There was one that was. You had to use Halfway your imagination done. a little bit. Yeah, on. some of the carpet wasn't there yet, things of that nature. But you're gonna, by touring those, you get to see kind of the, right. the how it comes together on your end, right. which is nice. And also, uh, you know, if you're getting those ideas about like you know flooring and decorating and colors and everything, that's the time to go through and pick it before they, you know. It really is. Yeah, yeah. and that's and that's the other beautiful thing about it. You're not necessarily going to come across a whole bunch of upgrade packages and, well, this is extra 10, 10 grand and this is 12 extra grand kind of thing. Right. Um, you know, they do have upgrade packages, but they're not, they're just not priced like that at no, all. Because no. uh, we're getting them directly from their manufacturer. Right. So there's not a bunch of middlemen sticking their hands in there either. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> yeah. And if you can't qualify for a 2,200 square foot stick built home, Right. You might be able to qualify for a 2,200 square foot manufactured home. No, there was a huge, a huge price difference in, in the stuff. I mean, really, when we worked yeah. it all out from beginning to end. And the real value difference that you get value. Okay. Is, is closer together, you right. know what I mean, than the pricing difference. Right. Yeah. So, I, we, well, we got to run pretty soon because we yeah. we got to give John a haircut over the break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hard to explain, but it's just something that comes up sometimes. It's, it's more of a show business thing. Uh, I guess you folks may not understand it. <laughs> Trying to keep it interesting for the second half. But the tour yeah. should have been enough, but we'll throw the haircut yeah. in and no, just like extra beautiful. spice on top. Yeah, but we're just trying to, you know, give you something different visually to look at. Yeah, there you, you go. Know? Not to say that he's not a great looking man, I'm a, but I'm we got a handsome go. man. It's, it's Nate's yeah. neighborhood. We'll be right yeah. back. We'll be right back. Come back. <laughs> 